Marka Ratursek, Nature's Fortune, How Business and Society Thrive by Investing in Nature. Dive into the world of A Nature's Fortune, How Business and Society Thrive by Investing in Nature or by Mark R. Tursek, a book that explores the ingenious concept of harnessing nature's own infrastructure to address humanity's needs. You will discover how nature already offers many services that our human-made infrastructure aims to replicate. Throughout the book, you will learn about the distinctions between the nature-provided green infrastructure and human-constructed gray infrastructure, the increasing trend of businesses investing in environmental protection for economic reasons, and how green infrastructure serves multiple purposes with unique benefits. Infrastructure for our needs The book highlights how human-made infrastructure is viewed as the perfect solution to combat nature's challenges. It discusses how infrastructure provides access to various services, such as clean water through sewage and filtration plant and shielding against droughts and floods using dams and levees. The book further highlights that nature has its way of tackling these challenges via green infrastructure. Green infrastructure breaks down contaminants, filters water, and stores excessive water for drier times. Furthermore, coral reefs provide protection against flooding by breaking down waves before hitting the land. With this in mind, the book points out that our planet already has much of the infrastructures we need to thrive in place. Therefore, it is necessary to consider the green infrastructure while addressing challenges in a bid to protect and preserve the environment. Investing in Nature Large companies are increasingly investing in environmental protection due to economic and regulatory pressures. Over 400 of the largest American companies issued sustainability reports since 2013 and many have committed to mitigating their environmental impact. By investing in nature, some companies have even found business opportunities and cost savings. For example, Instead of constructing a water treatment plant for $40 million, Dow Chemical created a wetland serving the same purpose for $1.4 million. In reaction to threats to their core business, such as Coca-Cola's bottling plant causing community wells to dry up in India, the company heavily invests in water preservation and commits to becoming water neutral by 2020. Many companies also invest in nature to protect their most important ingredient, water, which is threatened by the decline of forests. The costly gray infrastructure versus the self-renewing green. Our country's critical infrastructure, such as the levee system and wastewater facilities, received a D- grade from the American Society of Civil Engineers. Gray infrastructure demands a significant amount of maintenance, construction, and complicated processes. New York faced costly water filtration regulations in 1989, which led to a successful environmental protection project in the Catskills. Green infrastructure, unlike gray infrastructure, can self-renew and does not require costly maintenance. The benefits of green infrastructure are clear as it can be far less expensive than gray infrastructure. The positive effects of green infrastructure Our constant attempts to control nature and build gray infrastructure have often worsened the very risks they were meant to reduce. Artificial flood protection systems like seawalls can redirect wave energy back into the water and cause damage to natural habitats. In contrast, green infrastructure like oyster reefs and floodplains occur naturally and do not harm surrounding ecosystems while also providing efficient protection against floods. Floodplains, in particular, are able to adapt to changing river patterns and were able to mitigate the 2009 flood in Monroe when a levee upstream burst and the excess water was redirected to a vast floodplain area. Therefore, we should prioritize the use of green infrastructure for long-term and sustainable solutions to combat natural disasters. The Multiple Benefits of Green Infrastructure Green infrastructure, exemplified by the oyster reef, serves multiple purposes, including water filtration, habitat restoration, and recreational opportunities. Oyster reefs are crucial for water filtration, as each adult oyster can filter up to 50 gallons of water per day. Investing in environmental protection, particularly habitat restoration, produces spillover effects for neighboring areas and local economies. 
For instance, fish populations doubled and local incomes from fishing increased in community-managed no-fishing areas in Fiji. Preserving nature also enhances our stress responses and allows us to enjoy recreational activities. Scientific studies reveal that interacting with nature reduces stress levels, with rural residents displaying lower stress levels than city dwellers. Investing for the future Companies need to prioritize short-term returns, but long-term investments in conservation and the environment are crucial and may require government intervention. Investing in the natural world has significant benefits, but companies are often more attracted to short-term returns. The success of an investment also depends on the characteristics of the market. In the mid-2000s, sugarcane farmers in Colombia were facing declining revenues and water scarcity. They joined a water fund to conserve the Cauca River's watershed, resulting in a loss of $6 million per year but allowed them to keep running their five irrigation cycles per year, a short-term investment that paid off. On the other hand, investing in oyster reefs offers significant long-term rewards, but it may take up to 20 years for a private investor to break even. In these cases, government intervention becomes necessary. The market's characteristics and success mean investing in environmental conservation is not as easy as it seems. In 2006, Greenpeace showed McDonald's the link between soy farming and deforestation in Brazil. McDonald's pressed its main supplier Cargill, which agreed to purchase soy only from land that hadn't been deforested after 2006. In contrast, the campaign against cattle farmers who were clearing the rainforest was unsuccessful because their cattle could be sold locally, and deforestation wasn't monitored like soy farming. In such cases, the government's involvement becomes essential. Companies must prioritize short-term returns, but investing in conservation and the environment is crucial in the long run and must be taken seriously. Investing in greener cities With increasing urbanization comes higher stress levels, rising pollution, and unsanitary sewer systems that affect the environment. However, investing in greener cities could change the way we live. Landscape architects and engineers can use techniques to make cities more like forests rain gardens and green rooftops can absorb water, cool and clean the air, and reduce runoff. Also, green infrastructure investments can generate a total value of almost $3 billion over 40 years. With almost 3 billion more people predicted to live in cities by 2050, greener cities present a solution to relieve urbanization's negative effects. Cap and trade, a solution for climate change. Can a cap and trade approach solve the problem of climate change? What if companies started pouring money into protecting rainforests to limit carbon emissions instead of investing in technology to reduce their own carbon footprint? The cap and trade approach allows firms to trade their allowances for making carbon emissions. Each company can then decide whether it makes more financial sense to reduce its emissions and sell credits to others, or to purchase credits from other companies that have reduced their own emissions. The competitive market becomes an efficient tool in reducing environmental damage. The cap-and-trade approach reduces costs, which leads to an efficient use of scarce resources and reduces environmental damage. The United States implemented this approach in the 1990 Clean Air Act, leading to significant reductions in sulfur emissions at a far lower cost than economists predicted. It is cheaper to preserve rainforests, which contribute to 15% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions than to build or upgrade carbon filters in factories. By preserving rainforests, companies can use their credits instead of reducing their own carbon emissions. In conclusion, the cap-and-trade approach could be a potential solution for reducing environmental damage. Companies would invest in preserving rainforests, leading to a decrease in greenhouse gas emissions and contributing to a cleaner planet. As we reach the end of eNature's fortune, we realize the immense potential of investing in nature rather than simply emulating its services through man-made solutions. We have observed examples of corporations realizing the economic value of capitalizing on nature's green infrastructure, instead of constructing expensive gray infrastructure. Time and again, we have seen how green infrastructure presents multifaceted advantages that benefit various aspects of our lives. 
With this knowledge, we must strive to cooperate with nature and manage resources wisely to create sustainable cities and promote symbiotic growth between humans, businesses, and the environment.